The Steam Deck, Valve's first foray into handheld hardware, has finally arrived. We here at Rock Paper Shotgun were sent our very own system a few weeks ago, and have been putting it through its paces ever since. To celebrate, I recently asked our wonderful RPS readers if they had any questions about the Steam Deck that James, our hardware editor, could answer. Over 100 of you sent in a wide variety of interesting queries about the deck, covering everything from how to reinstall the default OS to whether or not you can lock the screen. We've aimed to answer the majority of these questions within this video. Before we start, it's worth noting that James has been testing the top-tier deck model that comes equipped with a 512GB NVMe SSD and an anti-glare glass screen. So without further ado, let's get going. So this first question is from Fallen Atheist. They ask, does it feel sturdy and maintain sensible heat levels over extended periods? What happens when it's stress tested? Glitches or overheating from long periods playing something graphically intensive using plugged in power? Does it feel better suited to gentle use and indie games? Uh, it feels sturdy enough considering it's made of plastic. Um, like it's, <laughs> it's not going to it's not going to shatter into a million pieces if you drop it a few feet. Yeah. Heat levels um, like in your hand it's fine. Um, the heat buildup's only really contained in the middle, so you don't feel it. You know where your hands are at the sides. I, I never experienced any kind of actual overheating issues. It doesn't it doesn't glitch. It doesn't smoke and catch on fire, etc. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I mean, the, the the battery might drain a bit faster, uh, but that's probably the worst of it. That said, it probably is better suited for gentle indie games. Uh, probably again because of the battery life. Yeah. You can play, you can play like AAA stuff on it. That's fine. Uh, but the games which don't tax the system as much, you know, keep it going a bit longer. But there's nothing to worry about in terms of like overheating either to the, the fidelity of the software or to burning your hands. Guaranteed, no hand burning. Rockhopshotgun.com. <laughs> This next one comes from uh, Jesse Bastian. I'm going to butcher every single username when we do this video. How does it compare to Nintendo Switch in terms of ergonomics, bulk, weight? It's a similar form factor, but a bit bigger. Does that extra size slash weight make a big difference in comfort? I actually find it as comfortable, if not maybe a bit more comfortable than the Switch. Although oh, okay. I do have big hands, which is definitely a factor yeah but the deck does have uh, kind of like curved grips at the side whereas the deck is just flat which i prefer i also never really found the weight an issue okay. size maybe if you're lying sideways in bed um you might have one of your arms you know lifted up higher than might be comfortable but gen generally as a kind of like portable device i don't think it's too heavy at all it also fits in my big coat pocket which is very important uh, really? Test, yeah. Oh, that is interesting. So it's not that heavy? I mean, it's heavy. It's heavier than the Switch, for sure. Right, okay. It's absolutely not too heavy to hold in two hands. So these next three questions come from a couple of different users, so I've just lumped them together. First question, how long does the battery last? Oh, it varies, and it varies quite dramatically. The least I've got from it, like when I was trying to intentionally burn it down, um, was about an hour and a half. Okay. That was playing Horizon Zero Dawn on, like, full brightness full speaker volume, uh, no frame rate capping or anything like that. And the most I've got out of it was playing Super Meat Boy, so like a very much more simple 2D game on like minimum brightness, airplane mode, capped to 30 FPS, and that was over nine hours. Whoa. So it's okay. val valves say two to eight hours. You can get like a bit more or a bit less than that. Right. Like I say, it, it depends largely on the game and also the settings you're using. I think realistically, most games will land somewhere in the two to four hour area so it is it is less than the switch you can you can extend it if you lower brightness or cap the fps that's interesting so you can literally make changes on a visual level to try and keep that battery life <laughs> ticking over a bit longer yeah, yeah it's actually some of the settings like this included are actually quite deep you can limit the frame rate um you can put like a, a limit on the thermal power the tdp you can even like limit the clock speed of the graphics processor so there's actually quite a lot you can do to get the battery up um, i don't want to over promise how dramatic that change will be but you'll probably I don't think you'd actually get like an hour and a half unless you were intentionally <laughs> intentionally <Yeah. laughs> caning it like I was. Next question is how quickly does it recharge? Empty to full will take you probably a little over two hours. 
Oh, okay. 30 minutes got me 24% and one hour took it to 48%. The last, I think, 20% of the battery charges a bit slower than the first 80%. So yeah, totally up to a little over two hours. The most important question on this list, can it run Crisis? <laughs> yeah, it can run Crisis Remastered, which is <laughs> which is the only Crisis we have on our uh, Steam Press account. Yeah, that'll do uh, medium quality, usually like 50 to 60 FPS, and good. high quality, more like 30 FPS. It cannot sadly run Crisis Remastered in can it run crisis mode and still get to 30 fps but yeah it it, it, it can run crisis we can we can say it runs crisis another question from various users here what's it like playing games with small text sizes or lots of text i think an example that was given quite often was crusader kings 3. it's obviously you know nowhere near as easy as doing it on a monitor the game i've squinted at most is probably actually deep rock galactic which isn't a strategy game by any means but it does have some quite itty bitty text although the deck does have quite a cool like zoom feature whereas if you hold down the steam button and you hold down uh, the left shoulder button it kind of dynamically zooms in and you can move around the zoomed in area so if, oh. it's not it's not like super ideal if you're doing something you know intense and on the move. But if you're you know reading text in a strategy game or something, then that's actually really helpful. Oh, how cool! They've definitely thought about big grand strategy games, haven't they? <laughs> Another sort of similar question. This is from Bills six six nine three. How well does it control strategy type games? Stuff traditionally played with mouse and keyboard. Well, the right uh, trackpad kind of functions uh, as a mouse. You know, as you, as you drag your thumb around, that drags the cursor around. Um, if you press it down, then that's a left click. It's probably not, like switching from a mouse and keyboard to, use to the deck isn't going to be as seamless as it would for like a, a shooter or yeah. you know, an action adventure game. But it, it, it should be playable. I, I, I tried uh, Total War Free Kingdoms and that worked fine. As long as, as, long as you use the, uh, the zoom function to uh, read all that tiny little text, <laughs> you, should, you should be all right. I mean, if you can play a Total War game, Totally war. Yeah, it doesn't run that well. It's like 30 FPS on load. Another important question from two users, Wakosa and GLNRBN. What does it smell like? My hands. No, it just smells like, it just smells like plastic. It doesn't really smell of anything. I did sniff this Steam Deck specifically for you. Wak <laughs> Wak Wakazobra and Glut GLN. RBN, uh, that was for you. I confess I did not smell it in the course of my review testing. Next up from Alice Marks, they have two questions. The first is, a recent technical analysis mentioned some concerns about the screen's colour space. Do colours feel vibrant and does contrast okay, or does it need particular lighting or similar? If, if we're getting like super technical, then no, it doesn't cover um, a huge amount of the colour space. I don't have my notes to hand, but it's, it's lower than 70% um, of the sRGB gamut, um, which right. is close to what you'd get on kind of like a very low-end gaming laptop display but that being said the contrast is good and the brightness is good so you shouldn't have any um, issues using it outside in direct sunlight. I live in England where the sun never shines. <laughs> but I did, I did get a bit of, I did get a bit of sunlight this morning. Yeah, on full brightness, like it's perfectly, it's perfectly usable. I didn't like feel it was particularly drab color wise. Like definitely, definitely like more so than my fancy IPS monitor. But I know I've been looking at it and thinking like, ugh, disgusting. It's fine for the money. Next up, we have a question by Abacus. They say, is there a lock screen of some kind, or will anyone? picking it up have full access to your Steam account. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a lock screen anywhere in the settings. What happens when you turn it on is, that assuming you've already logged in in the past, if it's just your account, then it'll go straight into your library. If you have multiple accounts on it, then tap the profile icon for that account and you immediately go into the library. So no, there is not. There's not a lock screen. Do not let your, <laughs> do not let your Steam Deck get stolen. <laughs> you'll, you'll, oh, be, you'll be down one Steam Deck and some stranger will play all your games. Next up, one from Jenna. They say, is it possible to use community-created Steam input configurations for every game? In theory, yes. Every Steam game, at least. That functionality is there for, from what I've seen on every every game I've checked, including the ones which uh, haven't been through Valve's uh, verification review program. Whether or not there will be community-created Steam input configurations for a specific game, that will that will obviously vary. But yeah, the possibility is there. We'll move on to a relevant one in that case then from Two-Faced Mare. How trivial is it to map keyboard controls to the many inputs of the Steam Deck? For most games, it's fairly easy. You just have to open the Steam settings and then navigate to the controller settings and then you get a layout uh, of the Steam Deck controls. You can rebind each individual one as if you were rebinding them on mouse and keyboard. Not all games I found have that, including some which are kind of like playable or verified. I'm 
you know the compatibility review program so it is i think on a game by game basis that being said uh, the majority of the games i've checked do have that functionality especially the ones with um steam input support marco snow asks are the control sticks as awkward to use as they look being so high up near the top edge of the system and immediately to the right and left of the d-pad and buttons i like that you've laughed at that already if so are the touchpads adequate replacements for said control sticks well, like i say like, i've got big hands which also means i have disturbingly long thumbs so actually <laughs> so <laughs> reaching reaching the reaching the thumbsticks isn't an issue for me. I, f I thought it would be, to be honest, before I got Steam Deck, but um, in practice, yeah. it's fine. Again, I also actually slightly prefer this layout to, this, to the Switch one. Um, I've, I was never really a fan of having the thumbsticks like not level on the Switch, whereas they are here, so it's more you know, symmetrical and feels nicer in my pernickety hands. I wonder if someone with small hands might not be as comfortable. I wonder if they might have to like have a higher grip maybe but no i don't feel i don't feel like they're uncomfortable at all positioning wise i think having them actually next to the you know the x y a b buttons and the and the, and the d-pad is actually fine because it means you know less travel as for the touch pads they're not technically worse than the thumbsticks in any way and they're actually better for things like using the cursor in you know like a strategy game or just navigating a menu if you want to use them for say aiming in a shooter not that they're and again not that they're inaccurate or that they're worse but they take they take a lot more getting used to i've been playing almost nothing but mouse and keyboards for <laughs> over a decade thumbsticks aren't as alien to me but this i've only barely used the original uh, steam controller so i've you know using a using a trackpad with my thumb <laughs> feels a bit alien to me the almighty moo asks more subjectively what did you do with it i know that's hard for a review where you're forced to use it in order to get a feel but if possible if there were places or ways you found yourself using it or types of games that worked particularly well that would be of interest okay i mean because i'm reviewing i have to do like everything i can with it right in terms of like how i see myself using it personally i've never i've never actually been into gaming laptops um even though they would solve a lot of the problems i have i not not problems but when it's like if i go on a trip um or i've got like a long plane ride or something i want to play games gaming laptops are still a bit like too big and chunky for me so the steam deck is kind of slots nicely into that um that use case i have so i'm definitely i'm definitely going to use it on long journeys or or trips or visits i don't know if i take it on just like a normal commute like like a short commute um just because it is it, may, it you know i said it's i said the size and the weight isn't a problem but if you're just going to whip out for 10 minutes or so you know it's quite a big thing to have especially with the case but if if you want to like settle settle down for a, a longer trip then that's fine and i've even even when i'm at home i have played a few games on the sofa when my you know my expensive gaming pc is just a few feet away um just because <laughs> i don't always want to be in my office chair so yeah it's just just it's a nice little thing to have one thing that really appeals to me is because like our job is to sit in front of our PCs all day, right? Yeah. And quite often on an evening, I might want to play a PC game, but I don't want to be in the same position I've been in all day doing work. Yeah, yeah. So there's something quite nice about the thought of being able to take my Steam library to just a different room in my own home. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. nice to hear you've been using it that way. What types of games have you been playing on it that you found to just be really good just for you and your personal tastes? So I think the games that uh, work best in it are the games which were kind of designed originally for controllers. So... You know, you've got your kind of like platformer games or games which are like ported from consoles like God of, God of War works really well. Horizon Zero Dawn works really well. You know, obviously because they, there's no friction in kind of bringing those to a purely controller-based mm -hmm. layout. I love the thought by just playing PlayStation exclusives on it, you're effectively turning the deck into PlayStation Vita 2, which makes me very, very happy. Oh, yeah. Next up, Greetings Earthling says, I'd like to know how easy it is to reset the default OS if I try out installing Windows Windows and it doesn't go well. Ah, I've actually done this. Um, sadly, because um, not because I was I'd already installed Windows, but there was a quite a, <laughs> quite a serious software problem uh, that I needed to fix. Basically, um, all you need to do is download the SteamOS image, uh, which you should be able to do because it's open source. Write it to a USB stick, ah. and then if you plug that and a keyboard into this, into the Steam Deck, then you can just. Uh, open up the boot manager that's easy to do you know select the usb stick and then load the load the new steam os um in from there the only real hiccup you might have is you do need a usb c hub to attach multiple you know peripherals like keyboards or mice or usb yeah. sticks because there is only one usb c port on the deck itself so you'll need one of, you'll need one of those because reinstalling the os does require keyboard input but no it's not it's not painful at all or 
even really like overly technical or complicated. I would recommend if you're gonna if you're gonna dual boot, I'd recommend doing like putting Windows on a micro SD card. That's purely because of yeah. storage worries, because you know it's not you don't get big SSDs even on the on the most expensive one. And if you partition that between SteamOS and Windows, you're gonna have barely any space left for games. So I'd recommend putting a, a second OS on a micro SD card. Next up, Dak Tak Lak Pak. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Try saying that twice as fast. How does it handle the switch from online to offline? If I forgot to log in and switch to offline mode before I left the house, can I use it without connecting to a network first? Can I walk out of my house playing a game and have it continue seamlessly when I go out of Wi-Fi range? So the get the Games aren't interrupted at all if you lose your Wi-Fi connection, as in like there's not even a notification saying you've lost a Wi-Fi connection, it just carries on as is. So yeah, there's no interruptions as such. The only issue might be the your Steam Cloud saves uh, will go out of sync if you, you know, close a game when you're offline, when you started online. Right, okay. But you can like resync it easily the next time you're actually, you're you are online, you just go go to the game page in the library and tap the Steam Cloud icon, and then that resyncs it. Oh, that's easy. I mean, it's kind of designed to do that kind of thing, like, you know, roam in between areas of having connection and not having connection. So, Dak, Dak, Tak, Pack, Pack, uh, worry, <laughs> worry no more, you'll, you'll be all right. There's probably a very easy way of saying that, that neither of us oh, have yeah, figured we, out. not getting it at all. I'm going to obsess over that for the Apologies, rest of the day. <laughs> Apologies to that, that person. French Tart says, is the D-pad actually any good? <laughs> um, I, I, I think it's okay. It is an adequate D-pad. It's, at, it's shaped like a cross, which I like. Um, I've never liked those circular D-pads that you used to get on your friend's odd PlayStation controller whenever you, <laughs> went, whenever you went around their house. Um, it is properly shaped like a D-pad. It has a it has a fairly nice, slightly chunky clicking action to it. Nice. And it is actually a D-pad, unlike on the Switch, which is just four round buttons in a vaguely diamond shape. BooBoo17 asks, any experience with streaming high-end graphics games from a local, same, next room, PC over Wi-Fi? Uh, yes, so the Steam Deck works fairly easily with Steam Remote Play. As long as you're on the same network as your PC, then that's like really easy to set up. On my connection, at least, um, I, have, I, have, I don't have like amazing Wi-Fi. It's, it's like fairly decent. No issues streaming, I'm like, best quality 60 fps from my pc to my to my deck i did have to manually go into the to remote play settings and change and like change the quality level from medium to high um at medium it was like capped at 34 fps or something weird <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 yeah what, 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 once i once i once i set it to you know have the best possible image that was all fine input lag is fine as well again i have like fairly decent internet so mileage may vary but it all you know it all seems Perfectly useful. Brenfilm85 asks, I'm curious how well it will handle multiple accounts, since my partner and I both use Steam. Can we both use it and swap between our accounts easily, or will we have to do a tedious signing out, signing in every time? Well, I, su I suppose this is the upside of not having a lock screen, <laughs> is, <laughs> is that uh, you can have uh, multiple accounts on the, on the Steam Deck, and switching between them is really easy. When you power on, you just tap the icon of whichever account you want to log in with. If you want to sign out, you just tap your icon in the top right of the screen, log out, and then just repeat the process. Tap, you know, tap a different icon to log in. So that's all super seamless. No passwords required. Some people, <laughs> some people might see that as a security issue, but if you, you know, are happy with that and you just want to switch accounts easily, then yeah, that's perfectly doable. I wish actual Steam had that option because <laughs> it would make it so much easier. And last one, this is from Uzetzen. Definitely not the way of saying that. Are the trackpads still buttons? Yes. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trackpads are buttons. They they go, they go in when you press down on them. Hey, thank you very much for getting to the end of this video. If you're interested in more Steam Deck stuff, keep it right here at RPS. In the meantime, take care, and I'll see you soon.